Welcome to Dreamers, Believers and High Achievers. My name is David C. Lee. Each episode, we bring you an inspiring person with an incredible message to help you turn your dreams into reality and unlock the high achiever within you. Thank you for spending some time with me today. And now off to the show. Today, get ready to fire because today's guest just burns with energy, exuberance and passion. I have met many motivated humans, but this man is way up there with the best. He eats, sleeps, and breathes success, morning rituals, habits, and routines, and is the author of the number one bestseller, Rise, Fight, Love, Repeat. A high-performance coach, speaker, and fellow podcaster, and the creator of the Morning Fire methodology. I am so excited to have Jeff Wickersham in the studio today, and he also has a very special gift for us at the end of the show today. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Oh, thank you. Grateful to, uh, to be here and excited for the conversation. Jeff, can you tell us something really interesting from your childhood? This shocks a lot of people because they see the finished product now, the confidence. I speak to companies and corporations. I was extremely, extremely shy and introverted when I was a kid growing up to the point where my mom used to tell stories of me wanting to go over and play at a friend's house. She would have to come with me because I was that shy. So (laughs) where you start does not predict where you're going to end up. Right. And, and people look at me now and they, they don't believe that story, but yes, I was extremely shy, extremely introverted. Okay. Well, so to where you are now, is that like a natural evolution or did you work on it? How did you come to be in the way you are now? It was work repetition over and over and over again. And, and still as an adult, when I left corporate America and became an entrepreneur, I remember like the first Facebook live video I went with the, the gym I opened and my hand was shaking, sweat was pouring <laughs> down my head, my voice was just monotone and it was awful. But that's what happens when we try something new. So it, it was an iterative process, which is so true about anything we do in life. And, and we're on a journey. And if you're on that journey to constantly get better, just know you're going to suck in the beginning. And if you keep with it, you stay consistent, you put in the reps, you will absolutely grow in any area of life. Absolutely. I mean, there is no one on this earth that does something for the first time and is good at it, is great at it. Everybody is terrible at it. But as we go along and as you said, put in the reps, repetition, repetition, we gradually get better. Jeff, I mentioned at the top of the show that you eat, sleep and breathe morning rituals. Just about every successful entrepreneur I have ever met, and I'm sure you're the same, has a morning ritual to set their day up. Jeff, why do you think this is so important? Well, especially for entrepreneurs, business owners, solopreneurs, the day can be very hectic. You can have external needs, wants, desires, clients coming at you every which way. But you can control the bookends of your day, how you end the day at night, how do you prepare for success in the morning, and then you can control that first 30, 45 minutes of your day. And when you control your bookends, it's really hard to have a bad day when you're preparing for success at night, you're closing down, and then in the morning, you're stacking these micro wins and you're getting all this progress. You control those bookends. No matter what happens in the middle, you're going to be so much more equipped to take it on. You're going to have a high energy level. You're going to have courage. You're going to have confidence. You're going to have all these pieces. So bookending your days is so vitally important because you can absolutely control that where we know you can't control the middle sometimes. So uh, that, that control factor is a key piece of why morning habits, morning routines are, are so critical. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, people who just get up in the morning and just meander about their day, don't really give it a kickstart, don't really energize it. They're going to go through the rest of the day exactly like that. And at the end of the day, when they come time to go to bed, they're going to say, I got nothing done today. Nothing. I didn't, didn't get any of my tasks. I didn't get any of my goals. But yeah, absolutely. By setting it up, you are going to win the day. Yep. So, so true. My mentor said to me many years ago that you never follow an unscarred general. Leadership, entrepreneurship, and success often comes from the fires of defeat and trauma. Jeff, can you share the moment you decided to be the best you you can be, and as a result, 
help others in their journey? I actually have three because it's an iterative process, right, of, of constantly getting better. Number one would be about seven and a half years ago, unfortunately, I had that life event that changed everything. I lost my mom to breast cancer. So it was that punch to the gut, cut at the knees. I question everything about life. I was in corporate America at that point. I really did some deep soul searching. Is this truly what I want to do? I always felt like a square peg in a round hole. So that would be number one was having just a traumatic event of watching my mom pass, knowing life is so fragile. What's my purpose? What's going to be my legacy? That that would be number one. Number mm-hmm. two would be after I left corporate America, opened up my gym. I remember I still had some bad habits that I had taken from college and in my 20s and in my 30s. And, and I went to run an exercise class on a Saturday morning and I hung out with my buddies late on a Friday night. And I remember my wife saying, how are you going to go teach a class, an exercise class? You're supposed to be this gym, this healthy individual, and you stink of alcohol, wow. right? So that, wake that was call. number, <laughs> yeah, wake up call to say, ho, ho, wait a second, I got I to gotta start looking at what I do on a daily basis, up-level my skills. And then number three would be facing bankruptcy and mm-hmm. you know being on the edge of divorce based upon my failure as a gym owner. And you know that was my, my first business and, and I really frame it up as a lesson. So many lessons I took from that and now have pivoted into my peak performance coaching business, but that was number three. And, and I'm sure there'll be others. And, and that's one of the amazing things about once you go on that journey to be the best version of yourself, there is no exoneration of the work, right? There is no destination. You just have to understand every day I'm going to get a little bit better. And if you fall in love with that, the process, that iterative process, then you're not going to be thinking, oh, if I just make this amount of money or if I just get this, then I won't have to do the work. So that's an an amazing piece to kind of think about and and reframe the, the journey. Absolutely, and also the fact that the uh, the failures or the or the things that you didn't achieve, I I don't really like that word failure. Uh, the things that you didn't achieve, you took them on board and you used them as fire to move forward. You learned from them, which is a, a fantastic lesson. So so true. Rise, fight, love, repeat is your best selling book. It's an incredible read. Can you tell us about it and how it came to be? Absolutely. So my late mother was a reading teacher and she loved, loved books. And I had a story to tell and I wanted to put it in print where others could grab it, read it. And it was kind of a symbolic gesture to my late mother. I'm sure she was looking down from, from heaven shaking her head saying, I can't believe you did this when I wasn't around because she would have tap danced like you wouldn't believe when I, uh, when I, I released it, but I actually started it right when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the pandemic hit, I was still had my gym business. I had to pivot. We went virtually, but I stayed consistent with my morning habits and rituals routines, right? Just like Mm -hmm. I spoke about before I couldn't control what was going on in the world. I could control how I wake up in the morning. So I had a lot of extra time in the morning to dedicate. And I said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. So I actually did it right when the, uh, the pandemic hit. And it's a story of my journey as well as giving people the blueprint to bookend your days, PM and AM. So, uh, and, and rise fight leverage Pete is my mantra that Mm -hmm. I live by every day. I've got a wristband on my left wrist. It's, it's your rising like a Phoenix reborn each day new opportunities, new possibilities. You're fighting for your physical fitness, mental fitness, nutritional fitness. We need that fight dog mentality to be successful. You're loving yourself most importantly. Then you can show up and love all those around you. And then finally, that secret sauce, it's not glamorous, it's not sexy, but just the repetition over and over again to make that process a habit so it runs on autopilot behind the scenes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> repetition, <laughs> repetition, repetition, repetition. The average person does it twice, maybe three times, and then goes, oh, there's that, where well, there's that shiny ball over there. They don't put the reps in. They don't do what needs to be done. Nothing comes easy. Nothing comes easy. But if there was something that came over or, or came about good from 
the pandemic was the amount of books that have been written. I think it's no coincidence that I've just released my book as well, Capture Your Dreams and Smash Your Fears. I wrote it at exactly the same time during the pandemic. We were locked down. All sorts of things were happening. A lot of spare time. I thought, what am I going to do with it? I know. I'll write a book. I'll write another book. So, yeah, that's one good thing that came out of it. Jeff, can I put you on the spot? Absolutely. What are your own morning rituals? So I'm going to give you three. There are more, but these are three that I do regardless of where I am, circumstances, anything going on in in my world. I could be on vacation. I could be on a business trip, whatever it is. First one, full glass of water right when I wake up in the morning because we are made so much of water. And the longest stretch of the day we go out with putting water in our system is when we sleep. So you're a little dehydrated when you wake up in the morning. So Mm -hmm. starting that rehydration process, having a full glass of water ready there, set to go, drink that. I can do that wherever I'm at. Number two is exercising for about 10 minutes, moving the body. I love doing push-ups, sit-ups, air squats every single day, whether I'm camping with my family on vacation it, it just always happens. That's my standard. Number three is meditation. Mm-hmm. So taking some time, focusing on my breath. I still do guided meditation. I've done it now for over 1600 straight days. I still use guided meditation because I like somebody speaking to me because my mind wanders. So water, exercise, meditation, you do those three things every single day when you wake up, you got three small micro wins. You've rehydrated the body. You've got it moving. And you've taken some time to just be in control, breathe. Those are power. Those are a powerful three that I love to start with. Yeah, they're all fantastic. I basically do the same thing as well. I also love a bit of uh, cold immersion. Uh, hated it when I first started it. And uh, and special ops, we had a lot of stuff that was in the water. And when did they make us do it? Middle of winter, never the summer. Nice. Middle of winter. <laughs> So I had a little bit of an aversion to it. And yeah, guided meditations are absolutely fantastic. I think most people, uh, most entrepreneurs, they've got so much going on in their mind. It's very, very hard for them to do non-guided meditation. But yeah, great tips. Great, great tips. Jeff, you've achieved so much. You've, you've, you've kicked so many goals. I know that you would have some awesome goals for the future. Can you share what they are? Absolutely. So I've got two, two main ones and they kind of coincide. One is to reach guide help 1 billion families by 2072. So Mm -hmm. 1 billion families by 2072, I'll be 97 years young there. And then the second one is to live to be 100 years old. I don't think many people have a age that they actually want to shoot for. So I I told my sons, I'm going to be around to be 100. So you better be healthy because we're still going to be kicking butt late into our <laughs> late into our years. So those kind of work together. And uh, that's that's my mindset. And that will allow me to have a huge impact on the world and make a dent in the universe. That uh, that longevity and that uh, having a, an age to shoot for is something that I've done as well. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, also, I'm not sure if you're aware of all the uh, all the new technology, all the new advances in science. It's you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, to say to somebody, um, you know, my goal is to be a healthy 100 years old, they think you're crazy. But I think with what they're doing now, it's going to get there. And the really exciting part is that as science gets uh, more advanced. We, okay, we age, but science doesn't stop now. It's going to keep on moving to the time we reach that age of 100. And by doing all the things that you've mentioned, doing the, um, the exercise daily, making sure you're hydrated, make, make sure your mind's in the right spot by the meditation, it's all going to go through to make us live to 100. I really think that's a feasible thing as long as you do the right thing, as long as you look at your nutrition. I really think that, you know, it's not going to be unusual for people to be a hundred and active. So, 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 so true. And I would say the cold immersion, I am a huge fan of that as well. Ice baths, cold showers, actually this winter, I don't know if you've done this yet before, but going for, if it's like under 32 degrees, going for a walk with just shorts, a hat, gloves, and sneakers on, it's yeah. amazingly <laughs> powerful to do that as well. So love love the cold immersion. It's not only the physical benefits, but I think it's the mental side of not wanting to do something 
telling your mind to go sit in the corner and saying, I'm moving forward ever anyway is, is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. I certainly want to um, spend a week with Wim Hof. He has a, uh, a week where he takes people to his place in Poland and you do his breathing, you do the cold immersion. It would be an amazing, amazing experience. I mean, if you could do that, you can do absolutely anything. So yeah, really looking forward to that. I'm right there with you. I saw him uh, on Instagram and I, I showed my wife because they were in Poland, like hiking up a mountain in the snow. That's I it. said, That's it. I've, I've, I've got to go and do this. She's like, you're crazy. I said, yeah, but ch crazy changes the world. Well, my friend, we'll keep in touch and we'll do it together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jeff, masterminds, they're one of the greatest ways to, to fast track success. You're obviously surrounded by people who have that excitement and you know, not one of us is smarter than all of us, whether it's an online mastermind or in person, they're so, so powerful. I mean, you're just immersed with go-getters, positive people. They're absolutely amazing. Can you tell us about the Kings of Sparta? Yeah. So this, uh, this came out of the pandemic as well, where everybody was forced to be at their homes, right? Go virtual many times if, if they're working. And I had this itch on the back of my neck that I was going through this personal development journey. And especially as men, sometimes it can be very lonely because society guides us to not do the things necessarily that we should do to intentionally step into the best version of ourselves personally and professionally. So I went out and searched for other men that are on that journey, on that mission, and brought a collective group together where we're accountable daily. We're setting targets, missions on a weekly basis, and we are growing together to be the best version of ourselves. And it's just incredibly powerful to surround yourself with positive energy, with positive forces, because they hold you accountable and they raise the game for you. Right. And that mm -hmm. is, uh, it's been an amazing experience to watch other men step out of the shadows. I always say men, especially like to hide in the cave and say, no, I'm good. I'm all right. I got to throw that kind of smoke grenade in there and <laughs> yeah. smoke them out to say, Hey, no, there is more. You can do things that you didn't thought were possible. Yeah. And the best way to do it is to be around others that are doing it. it inherently raises your game. Inherently you get this discipline, you get this level that you operate at. And it's just so incredibly powerful. And, and so many times we don't intentionally look, hey, who's in my circle? Who's a positive force? Who's a negative force? I should be more on the positive force. Or if I'm the highest operator in my circle, I might need to find another circle to be in because you want to be pushed. You want to be pulled. You want to be inspired. You want to be motivated. And that's the overall theme of the uh, Kings of Sparta Mastermind. Fantastic. Sounds like a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Jeff, we're going to wrap it up now. Thanks for sharing so much of your life. Thanks for uh, sharing the journey that you've been on. What parting piece of advice or resource can you, can you give us and where can we learn more about your incredible work? Absolutely. So the parting piece of advice is every single day you get on this planet is a true gift. And if you can just start your day with that mindset, amazing things can happen. And this has come from losing my mother, right? From that mm -hmm. deep pain mm -hmm. and, and knowing each and every day that we get to have this conversation, you, you get to stand up straight, you get to hug your loved ones. It, it truly is a gift and, and appreciating that is a incredible way to go about your day. So that, that would be my parting wisdom mm -hmm. where people can find me. They can go out to, uh, to my website. I've got a ton of content out there, www.the.the morningfire.com. They can grab a complimentary call with me if they'd love to uh, love to sit down and talk and, and wow. Wow. See, see how I could I could motivate, inspire and see if there's there's a mutual need there, as yeah. well as I've got a podcast, Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs. I'm out on YouTube, out on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, all the social channels. So if they want to, if they have a favorite social channel, they can look me up and follow me as well. Fabulous. I'm going to put the uh, the links to Jeff's resources as well as some of the value gems that uh, that he shared with us today. It's going to be on the show notes page for this uh, this episode. Jeff, once again, thank you for sharing your joy, your enthusiasm, your energy with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I truly appreciate it. Friends, we all have a choice, success or excuses. It's clearly your decision. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of Dreamers, Believers, and High Achievers. We hope you found today's discussion impactful. To help support the show and allow us to reach as many people as possible, we'd love if you could pass this along to at least two friends or family members to help them achieve greatness in their own lives. You can also visit davidclee.com for more information and resources to help you take your life to new heights, as well as connect with David directly on social media 